Hello. Yes, we are on. Think big. Think big. That's what they tell us, isn't it? So I did. And I still do. And the results are hilarious. (laughs) <laughs> from lost money to gained experiences and incredible and unexpected encounters. And today, I will tell you the story of my first experience of thinking big in business and how this, ladies and gentlemen, ended up. <laughs> You'll see. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the second part of the business series called having a business, being entrepreneur, and again, also, this episode is seeable on YouTube. So I, I, I can see you. Yes, I can see you over there. My name is Anna Yelen, and I'm your time expert. Someone, as you know, hadn't a clue how to start or how to run a business. Someone who was taught many lessons in entrepreneurship the hard way and someone who's very thankful for this. Now, remember the end of the last episode. There was, we talked about the first turning point when this one came into my life to change the business to the better. And, uh, well, hmm, let's say better is maybe not yet the right word. (laughs) You'll see after the story. But it changed the way of doing business. And it was Samuel, my dear husband, sitting over there today. Hello. 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 So happy that he's home. And uh, it was it was you. It was Samuel asking me the one and only question. How would you do it? I remember it very well. How would Anna do it? That's what he said. How would you do it? Now, as you remember, I, ha- I, th- I knew I had nothing to lose. I could try to whatever I wanted to do. But there was still a big obstacle or a hurdle. The thing was, would I dare? Would I dare to do it my way? <laughs> you know, to get here to the point of handling critics, mean comments and not to care too much of what others think of me. This took me like years, like years. You remember this as well. Yeah, yes. that, was, that was not easy for me. And it took years of self-development work. <laughs> and today I also know what it means to leave your comfort zone. But at that time, I was still in my comfortable zone. You know, it was... Oh, I was so secure in there. It was, yeah, it was comfortable. But I knew that if I would start to do it my way, I would have to leave this comfort zone. Would I dare? Was I ready? Well, if I wanted to stay in the game, I simply had to. There was no way around it. I simply had to. So I thought to myself to encourage me, I said, okay, so I'm just going to take small steps and try it that way. Mm -hmm. In the next two episodes, my dear listeners out there of this series, I will tell you two stories. One is about thinking big and the other one is about daring to do it your way. And there are many more stories, but these two stories, they are significant because they turned out so much different than expected. And that's, that is quite a funny feeling. You know, you, you, are, you know exactly where you're going to go. And then it turns out totally different. Very interesting. Very, very good. Very good. And today I will tell you the one, the one about thinking big and it goes like this 
I sat in my office with the one question spread out on white paper, how would I do it? There was nothing on that, just this one question. And then I started to put the topics in there, like homepage, workshops, projects, clients approach, sales. And I started to think, how would I do it? And I remember I came to the workshops and I wrote, I would rather give a speech than a workshop. That's how I would do it. Rather a speech than a workshop. Okay. Now you have to know that at that time we lived in Nyon, in the French part of Switzerland. And every day I walked for two to three hours. Um, just to, that was my way of thinking and of cleaning my brain. Always with a notebook to stop and write down all the ideas which would arrive. And then often I returned back home, walking past the big castle of Neon. And on this day, with having the idea of giving a speech in my mind, I stopped in front of the castle and I looked at it. And I thought, yes, I'm going to give a speech in this castle. That's what I thought. Euphoric and motivated without even having a speech, without even having anything. I went in there. I th thought, uh, I said, uh, I would love to give a speech. And they said, yeah, you, you could hire a little part here of the castle. And I thought, me voila, me, me voila. At that night, when Samuel came home, we went to the Italian restaurant and I told him about the idea. And you should have seen the sparkles in his eyes. Yeah, you were on. You, you were like, yes. And that is when we said, OK, but if we are going to do this, let's do it big. Then really, let's go for it. Now. As you remember, I had like a few peanuts left on my bank account and we had to decide, am I going into insolvency or are we taking another chance to see if it will work my way? Would it maybe, maybe work? I had some small amount of private savings left and Samuel as well and for him, he had like another question. Your question was more like, if I would invest in this project, am I investing in this because I love her? Or am I doing this because I believe in her ideas? And personally, I wouldn't have accepted it for love's sake. Because that was business. And that was exactly what he believed in in my business and you know it's good to have someone who believes in you because at that point I was on the ground I, I didn't know anything anymore I was just I just knew I, I don't have anything to lose but if we would take this other chance well then I would guarantee I would go for it and yes I would dare So the first thing I did for the Castle Speech Project, I met a woman from a company who would help to organize the event. And after two hour meetings, we sat there, we talked, uh, we decided to print flyers and to organize a morning where we, we, we would give tea bags to people arriving at the train station in Nyon with the slogan, today, Make yourself a gift, have a break. And with the link of my rather boring homepage, which will link to the event. Totally old school. But yes, um, also because, I mean, at that time I was still convinced that I'm never ever going to be on social media. That's why I needed the flyers. But nobody except my friends and my family knew who is Anna Yellen? The time expert didn't even exist at that moment. It was just my company, which was called 
Yalen Seminars. That was the fancy name, Yalen Seminars. <laughs> I asked my graphic designer at that time to create the flyers and to print them. It costed a lot. I also organized a company to do the tea bags. And I think I remember a few years later, we still had so many that we had to burn them because they were out of date. Oh. Now, one of the biggest tasks for myself was also to create the speech. And in French, that was a challenge. I've never done anything in French. So, um, but if I'm good in something, it's to throw me into cold water, literally. So... I did, I prepared the speech and then the packages started to arrive. The flyers came, a lot of them, with the date, as you can see. So after the date, they're just useless, useless. So the flyers came packages full and we had a tiny apartment in Nyon so I had to place them next to the bed and a few days after this two guys arri arrived with the van and they took the packages and uh, they were from the event planning company <laughs> and they drove around placing the flyers in three thousands of letter boxes three thousand even in those who were marked with no advertising. <laughs> Another few days later, the tea bags arrived. See? Today, aujourd'hui, offrez-vous un cadeau, faites une pause. Today, um, make yourself a gift, have a break. <laughs> And, yes, what else arrived? Three shirts. Three shirts. I show you here, see here, with my logo in French, Yelen Seminaire. Why three? Because there were two girls who helped me to give tea bags to people arriving at the train station. Also, we paid them. And um, of course, to be able to do this, you also have to pay for where you are going to be at this uh, place. And I think we booked it the place for three hours, which means three hours of handing out tea bags. And this, this was hard for me. Remember how hard that was for me? Yes. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, blimey. And that was really leaving my comfort zone in a big way because I'm not the one who easily approaches uh, people. So I just looked at the two girls next to me with the fancy uh, shirt and with the big smiles like this. And um, they were approaching the people and giving the tea bags like, hey. And you want a tea bag and a tea bag for you, sir, and the tea bag for you, madam. And I was looking at them and uh, I was sweating and um, in fear. And I thought, okay, Anna, come on now, imitate them. And I was like, uh, uh, sir, a tea bag, please. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, like this. S sorry for disturbing, a little bit like this. Now, I was knackered after this morning and we still had some flyers left. And Samuel and I, we walked around the city at night time and put the flyers on the windshield of all cars we passed. And that was a lot of fun. Now, as you can hear, the preparation was big. It was huge. We invested money and a lot of time in this event. A lot. Now, you know what? The event never took place. Never. Nada. Nix. We had one person who signed up for the speech. And that was my friend Georges. And we had one lady who was interested in the event but couldn't come at the named date. The time we have spent into the creation of the flyer, the distribution of 5,000 flyers, The making of 
5,000 tea bags, standing four hours at the train station, sweating fear and distributing the tea bags to strangers, creating a speech which took me ages and then repeating it over and over and over again. And all the money we put into this project, all this for one single person who couldn't even come. How did I feel? Was I disappointed? No, not really. Because I was far more focused on the adventurous path which I thought was so new and so cool. And for the first time in my life with my business, I did it my way. And that's, that's like the greatest feeling ever. I felt liberated and free and this gave me, gave me the right kick in the right direction. And yeah, this time we had no one who was interested. I didn't take it personally. I just thought, okay, that wasn't the right approach. The lost money, that's business. It can happen. And I'm very pragmatic in those belongings and I move on directly. No shedded tears for this. Never will not happen. And I mean, come on, we, we've learned a huge lesson in this. And that was no more flyers. <laughs> and which was the no more flyers was the beginning for a huge change. No more flyers meant to start a whole new approach. And we needed this big failure to move on in another direction. The right direction? We'll see. But it was another direction. And this is our next episode's topic. The new approach and what happens if you dare to do it your way. And you'll see, it really is. It's a very funny story. So stay tuned. But now, do I believe in think big? Yes, yes, absolutely. The paradox of it all is, though, that there is a great possibility that you will fail. But these are the moments where you will learn more than you can ever read in any book or learn in a class. It is so important to have those learnings. And now when I look back at the last four years and that's the point, that's the big thing. It feels as if I have only learned from the big failures. I have only learned from the big failures. And the big failures come only if you think big. That's the thing. And I don't think you learn from the small mistakes. You know why? Because you don't feel them. They don't hit you in the face. No, you, you can't feel them. So if you want to advance in business, you have to learn to think big. Try that and see what happens. And this, and this you repeat. Think big, try it out and see what happens. Think big, try it out and see what happens and learn from it. My dear listeners out there, my one and only advice for today is see how it feels to think big. You don't need to be in a situation where you are independent or your own boss. Think big wherever you are. Maybe thinking big for you means to take your family to buy a van and travel for a few months. Maybe thinking big for you means to be in a, in a band and, and play concerts. Uh, maybe thinking big means to own a blue spa. Whatever it is, think big and see how it 
uplifts you. It makes you fly a little bit, doesn't it? But that's good. It's it's so good because you'll you'll be back. <laughs> you'll be back on earth anyway, but it uplifts you. It's a great feeling. And if you fall, don't worry. You're not the only one out there. And that is how business works. You stand up again and you try again. And maybe you fall again and you stand up again and you try again. But think big. Now, I am very happy, dear listeners out there, to have you here on board. I feel flattered and I'm very happy. (laughs) and uh, please stay tuned because in the next episode the the next story you know which one it's oh it's it really is incredible um because uh god i just so went out out of my comfort zone and it was like wow and then we thought wow and then we wanted to go and celebrate the wow, which I will tell you what it was. And then just we got this email and we were just sitting there and thinking, what? But this is next episode. Thank you so much for being here. Have a lovely day or evening or night or whatever. Take care. Bye bye. 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 Did I forget something? Welcome to all the new listeners.